we're not always excited about the fact that we can save lives. How would I even know about lung cancer? I mean, I'm, I'm up here. I played in the NFL. I played in the NFL for 12 years. That's me playing with the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> playing with the Buffalo Bills in 2009. Am I thinking about lung cancer at that time? Absolutely not. Right? The next year, I had a chance to go to the Washington Redskins, or now the, the commanders that now are sold, and Magic Johnson's a part of the ownership. Washington Commanders. And I'm there in the offseason, and it's my 13th year, and I'm thinking, can I get this done? Body. Can I get it done? Knees. Can I get it done? Neck. Can I get it done? And, and, and my body, un unfortunately, was like, eh, no, nah, I don't think you can. <laughs> but also, more importantly, what happens as a team, because this is a high-level producing, there's a point where you can't just get it done. I might be able to run around, but I can't just get it done. And so, but I love this game. And I, and I was... I was thinking about what I was going to wear, and you know, I have you know, a bunch of different things that I can wear, but I wanted to have a suit on because I wanted to think of things in terms of business. And so I played in the NFL, but what I love is I love the NFL business. I love the NFL business in that we have teams that are competing, 32 teams that are competing with a salary cap that are even, and where the game, you know, some people might say it's scripted, <laughs> all right? But it's, it's not scripted, but what is kind of scripted is the fact that they fought for a salary cap so that there's going to be competitiveness across because the teams are going to be basically even. And so when you're watching a game, you're more often than not, that game's going to come down in the last two minutes. And it's not because somebody scripted it. It's because somebody said, I want competitiveness. Somebody said, I want every week for every fan base to believe that they can win. And not just every week, but I want them to all believe that their team can go to the Super Bowl. I want them to believe that. I want them to know that. The NFL is committed to doing that, and you have to. You have to have an organization that does it, and I love it. And I loved playing. And so I got done playing. I'm, you know, I'm with the Redskins. You end up releasing. I'm at home for the first time, and, you know, my girlfriend at the time, Keisha, she's challenging me to do P90X and run a 10K race. You can see her. She, she was a rally cat at Clemson on the dance team, in amazing shape. And so in December, she had a little shortness of breath, a little so shortness of breath, and she goes to a primary care doc. Instead of ignoring it and saying, no, no, I'm not going to go, a little shortness of breath goes in, talks to her primary care doc. Primary care doc, get her some antibiotics. She said, let's just do a chest x-ray. It came back that she had a mass in her left lung. And potentially, maybe that's not cancer. This picture is from Christmas, December 25th, 2010. Two days later, we found out through a biopsy, lung cancer. And I said, we found out the most important fact, and that is that anyone can get it. If you'd have told me that before, would I believe that anyone can get lung cancer? But after seeing my wife, my wife right here, my future wife in this picture, I know it. Unfortunately, it's not just that anyone can get it, but too often it's diagnosed late stage. And so, stage four, lung cancer. So, she was tested for some of the innovations, but unfortunately, it didn't work. So she ended up on standard chemo and, and radiation and ended up passing a year later, December 27, 2011. When she was diagnosed, she had people standing with her. She had love by her. I was back to back right there. And she had a group of people. She had a group of people. These aren't just her friends, but these are her friends that work at CDC. This is, they work at Emory, at Winship, at the Cancer Center. These are people that work at the, uh, uh, for disability. They, they work as a pediatrician. There's, a, there's doctors. So in the midst of this diagnosis, which is terrible, she had a team of experts that were right around her. And then we happened to live in Atlanta so that we had a, a team of people that all the things that Trevor said, they accepted them. They accepted the innovation even at that time. So we didn't have to fight for things that were already there. So I said she passed a year later, but before she passed, we had a chance to get married. We got, no, we got married November 27, 2011. This is the day before. And before that day, she came to me. She said, Chris, what if we don't get presents? What if we ask our family and friends to give money? the foundation so that we can fight with the community for the lung cancer community. I said, man, I, 
Absolutely, babe. Now, it's so important because people will say that your wife would just be proud and you're continuing the legacy and all this thing. I said, well, hold up. I want you to really get that my wife is the one. It starts with her (laughs) in terms of she could have very easily said, you know what? I don't need presents, (laughs) you know, or say, give me the presents. This is our wedding. But she didn't. Right. She made the decision to fight for the community. And so I say that these are decision points. These decision points that are so important is initially when she was diagnosed, she had a team around her that allowed her to be able to fight and make a decision to live rather than just accept death. At this point, she had the decision point that says, am I going to use this moment and be about just me and just us? Or is this a chance for us to send a message about something that's bigger? The lung cancer community. That's what she did, a decision point. So on that day, We got married, we made two decisions, one to each other and one to the lung cancer community. And so she passed a month after that. And I have a choice, I have a choice, I have a decision now that says, can I continue this battle? I have to ask myself, can I accept that my wife is not gonna come back? That nothing that I do, being here, this TEDx will not bring my wife back. Can I be happy about things that are changing people that are benefiting from progress and am the next one am i willing to fight for it i said yes 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 change the face of lung cancer and that means with a platform that is the nfl that's before the super bowl in 2012 it says we can take that message out but the problem is it can't just be my message see the nfl it's not about one team that just wants to be competitive one individual one coach or 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 you know it is a collective of people that decide that we want to have a community that's competitive right so i went out and i talked to the people i went out to the, the community because i'm saying what what do we want what is our decision how do we want to be defined as a community that's me going out and asking people do they know about lung cancer <laughs> do they know the the stats about it nobody know because we have to tell them Right? I want you guys to see that that's one of the top doc surgeons, the third thoracic surgeon in, in New York, in the Bronx, and then that's the survivor in the middle, and that's Roger Goodell. And people ask me all the time, uh, is the NFL supportive? I say, yes, that's the commissioner of the NFL. The commissioner said, what do you want? He's been saying that. But the key is, what do we want? And are we willing to fight for it? American Cancer Society is a huge part of determining how people think about lung cancer. When I first met with them was after talking to the commissioner, right after Keisha was diagnosed. I met with them March 2011, and they said, we've got the great American smoke out. That was it. My wife is 37 years old, no history of smoking. They said, great American smoke out. Because that's what they said. Historically, that's what they said. So when we think of these decision points, these decision points, so you can see this, how do we use the NFL, this challenge? So what's with all this information that I, that I collected by going out and meeting with the people, it wasn't about me changing the face of lung cancer, but really saying, do we want to change the face of lung cancer? Do we accept the change that is happening in lung cancer? So are we willing to change the narrative about lung cancer? Are we willing to do that? That's a challenge. Are we going to acknowledge that anyone can get it? Are we going to acknowledge that in 1998, the cigarette industry got indicted for $206 billion? So are we going to blame somebody that smoked or are we going to lift them up with compassion and fight with them and support them? Are we going to complain that there's not enough money or are we going to ask ourselves, have we asked for that money? There's a challenge I show you this up there because the Super Bowl challenge, that Super Bowl challenge, I told you before, I love the NFL. And so the challenge has been, the challenge is what kind of community do we want? The NFL was intentional in the type of community they want. And that is a competitive community across 32 teams going after it. And so people ask me, well, what do you want? And I'm like, well, I'm a ball player. Yes, but I love this game. All right. And they, they missed that part that I love this game. I say, so if you're watching a game and it comes down to the last two minutes, how am I translating that? It says I want competition across, high-level competition, which means in every city there's a team that is fighting for greatness. I say I want that, but that has to be who we are. 
the NFL fights for that every day, for that to be the standard. We have to fight. That's the challenge, that fight. All right, but that fight is difficult. Real deal, it is difficult because what we look at is unlike other cancers and other diseases that we're fighting against a history that is different. I took this picture in London, all right? It says cancer and you see a cigarette. We're fighting against a history that was cancer and a cigarette. We're fighting against a history that is just prevention. Not that someone else did that to us, because that's a great thing to get people to stop smoking. So we're fighting against that the Surgeon General said in 1964, that cigarettes cause cancer. We're fighting against the great American smoke out that started in 1977, again, getting people to stop smoking. We're fighting against it only that that's the narrative and that's the only narrative, right? We're fighting against a CDC commercial that says tips from a former smoker with a person that is actually apologizing mm. rather than us celebrating that they stopped smoking and of celebrating the fact that there was early detection. We're fighting against history, a history that said the only thing that we have, the only thing that we could fight for is prevention. And so we have a decision. And that decision is as a community, how we do we define victory? Historically, we defined victory only as getting people to not get lung cancer. Our challenge, our decision that is right now, every day, is will we accept that it is important that we get people to stop? Yes, that is important, but it's not their fault. We already proved it. And that our goal has to be survivorship. And we have to be willing to go all the way in on that. We have to accept that there's early detection. And we have to deploy that. We have to know that there's a nodule clinic. We have to deploy that. We have to know that there's new targeted therapies where people are living so much longer and so much better. We have to know that there's immunotherapy. And we have to know and accept that the new drugs, that that is a victory. We have to know that clinical trials and access are a game changer. We have to know that research matters. And we have to know that survivorship is critical. And that means meeting somebody where they are and recognizing that cancer is not the only thing that they're dealing with. They are a person that is living in this world. And so are we going to meet them with their issues as they are taking in the trauma of cancer? Are we going to fight with them? And so I show you this white ribbon project. Let me grab this ribbon over here. And I say I had a chance because we were fighting to find the people that are willing to stand up. And I had the amazing opportunity to meet Heidi and Pierre Onda. Heidi is a survivor in Greenwood Village, Colorado. And her husband is a primary care doc, retired now, caregiver. And there was a point where Heidi realized that if we wanted things to change, that we were going to have to stand up and fight for it. We were going to have to stand up and demand it. And that change is that survivorship is not a mistake. Survivor is not something that we're going to apologize for, that we are going to celebrate it. We're going to meet people where they are, and we are going to be good with it. And so she asked her husband when she realized that, that we had to do it to make me a big white ribbon. <laughs> she said something else, but it really is a big white ribbon. And this big white ribbon, so as you see this, this big white ribbon is a way of being able to say, actually, you know what, let me hold on to it. This big white ribbon is a way of saying that, that you matter, regardless of how you got this. This is an inclusive community, but you matter regardless of how you got it, and we know it takes a team. So every person that is a part of changing and supporting and making, paving a way for this person's experience to be better, we see you, we need you, thank you for the survivor to let them know that, hey, you are not alone. We know this is terrible that has happened, but you are not alone. And let me make sure it is clear there is hope. You are not alone. We have doctors. We've got the whole medical team. You guys heard it from Trevor. They are fighting for you. You are not alone. You got NFL franchises that are fighting. You got your caregiver that is standing right by you. You are not alone. This is not unique to the United States. This message of love and making sure people know that they are not alone is not a unique message to the Berkshires. This is a message that crosses boundaries. 
that says love. When they say, well, what do we need to do in changing the face of lung cancer is infusing love into the equation. Infusing love is recognizing that the people matter. And then being honest about what can we do right now today to save as many lives as possible and improve as many lives. There's a decision that we have to make. It's a decision point. What kind of community are we going to have? This white ribbon says, I'm all in. But it can't just be one. It can't just be two. Just like the NFL or any big organization, it has to be the culture. It has to be the people that are all in. So thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for having me here. And I want you guys to know, as I stand up here, I'm all in. I'm all in. <laughs>